right, cut it. Cut the music. Stop that, I told you. Just this morning, I got a letter from the Warner Brothers and the Warner sister. They're going to shut us down tomorrow if we don't watch it. No more copyrighted music. I'm not made of money here. Oh, there you are, Grandpa Finkel. Oh, hello, Suzanne. What can I do for you? I need some money. You, you what? Not a lot. Just a few hundred. Hundred? What are you buying, a solid gold Cadillac? No, I... Cadillac? For a few hundred dollars? What year is this? In my day, the cars were solid gold and only cost $299. Of course, the dollar was stronger back then. There wasn't even a China, I don't think. We used to walk to the dealership uphill both ways. And gas back then was only a nickel a barrel. And oh, a uh, hey, Suzanne. You got any money? If I did, you think I'd be listening to this voluntarily? Oh, I see what you mean. What do you need money for? He didn't forget to pay you yesterday, did he? No, I got paid. Uh, it was in rolled quarters, but I got it. Yeah, I think he keeps them in a jar under his bed. Like I said yesterday, he's very old. Yeah, well, I just wanted to buy a box of candy to send home to my mom, and I'm about two dollars short. Oh, is that all? Sure, I've got two dollars. Here. Oh, great, thanks. I'll pay you back soon. Sounds good to me. In the meantime, I'm going to try and get a little more than $2 out of Grandpa Finkel. I'm dying to buy a new pair of shoes. Between you and me, I'm very self-conscious about my entire lower half. Oh, yeah, me too. Well, good luck with your candy shopping. Yeah, good luck with Finkel. The yen overtook the dollar, and that's why I say no to communism. Okay, Grandpa, do you think I could borrow that money from you for some new shoes? I promise I'll pay you back. I'll work extra hours this week at the ice cream store. I'll pay you back in a week, I promise. I just can't wait for those shoes. Well, all right, all right, here you go. Yes! One week later. Suzanne? Suzanne? Here. Oh, there you are. Listen, Suzanne, I've got to put a down payment on a feeding trough. Those require down payments now? Do you want me to go on a rant about the economy again? No, please don't. You need a feeding trough. Gotcha. How can I help? Well, you can start by paying me back for that $200 I let you borrow. Uh, $200? I don't recall any $200. Suzanne, I'm looking at those $200 on your feet right now. Oh, right. The shoes. About that. Now, as I recall, you also work part-time at the Baskin 31 Robins. It's not called that, but yes. You should have more than enough to pay me back so I can get that feeding trough and continue to maintain this ranch that provides you with shelter and clothing and all that good stuff, yeah? Well, ordinarily, yes. But you see, I kind of spent the money already, so I don't have any to give to you. Now, let me see if I understand this. You borrowed some money from me, promised you'd pay me back in a week, and now that it's time to do so, you spent it already? You have nothing to give me? That's basically it, yes. You've got a $200 debt here. Does that mean anything to you? It means I'm very sorry. Does that account for anything? It doesn't put a new feeding trough on the ranch, no. <sighs> Suzanne, you disappointed me. I'm going to have to ground you until you can work off the debt that you owe me. Oh, Grandpa, no. Please. Oh, you'll do extra chores, including cleaning out the cow patties in the back stalls. Grandpa. No, Grandpa. It, it, please. Anything with that. Please. I'm sorry I spent the money. I shouldn't have. All right. I'll I'm tell sorry. you what. All right. I'll tell you what. You can forget about the debt. It's forgiven. Really? Really. You seem sincere, so the debt is wiped clean. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. Thank you. Sure thing. Now you run along while I look into donating plasma to pay for this feeding trough. These are tough economic times. Oh, you look like you're in a good mood. The best! I just... Hey, do you hear that? <gasps> Ice, Ice cream truck! truck! Quick, give me some money. Uh, I only have a quarter. Well... I let you borrow $2 last week. Oh, yeah, but 
Well, I haven't been paid again, so uh, I don't have well, any... Well, give me the dollar! Hurry! Before the truck drives away! Oh, well, I guess I... We could split something. No, no, no! That is my dollar! I'm gonna get a single serving. But you work at an ice cream store. You can have all the ice cream you want. That's not the point! I gave you two dollars! You owe me! Pay up! Well, well, but... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have it yet. Give me some time. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back. You've had plenty of time. Now you wait right here and don't move. Because you couldn't pay, you're not getting any ice cream. Look, the truck is already driving away. That's your punishment. Oh. Suzanne? Yeah? I'd like a word with you. Suzanne, I just watched the most embarrassing display. Do you know what it was? No. I just saw a person deprive her friend of some ice cream just because he couldn't pay back a debt of two dollars. But that's my two dollars. And what about the two hundred dollars you owed me? Well, that's different. Oh, how's that? You forgave my debt and I didn't forgive Billy's? Oh, I see. So that's how it works, eh? You think that you get to have your great debt forgiven, but you're not willing to forgive Billy's small debt? Uh-huh. Okay. I'll tell you what. How about I say the deal's off? Now you owe me every penny of that $200 you took. And until you can pay it back, you'll be cleaning those cow patties every morning and every night. Grandpa, you can't do that. You said it was forgiven. Well, guess what? It's unforgiven. <sighs> Kids. Do you remember the parable that Jesus taught in Matthew 18? Not me, sorry. Not really. There once was a servant who owed his master $10,000, and he could not pay the debt, not even if he had ten lifetimes. And so the master said his servant should be thrown into prison to work until he could pay back whatever he could. But when the servant begged and pleaded for mercy... The master granted it. He didn't say pay me later or even pay half. He just said the debt is forgiven. Right, that's what you... The story's not over, young lady. Afterward, the servant who had been forgiven went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred dollars and demanded that he pay up. And the other servant, however, could not pay up and instead begged for mercy, promising to pay him as soon as he could. But that mean old servant didn't listen. He threw his friend into the prison and demanded that the fellow servant work until he paid back every penny of that hundred dollar debt. And do you know what happened next? The master found out that the servant that he forgave a ten thousand dollar debt to was running around roughing up people who owed him a hundred bucks. So he caught him and told him that he would throw him in prison until he could pay back all of the $10,000 that he owed him, even though he had previously been forgiven. That servant, because he was not forgiving, ended up being punished. So, what's the lesson? Well, it seems to me, uh, let's have Suzanne answer this one. If you've been forgiven, you should forgive others. That's exactly right. What's two dollars in comparison to two hundred? What's it matter if one person does one little thing to you compared to all the sins of the world that Jesus died to forgive us of? If you ask me, we've been given a tremendous gift, and there's no way we could ever pay him back for it. But the least we can do is forgive others as faithfully as Jesus has forgiven us. You think you can handle that? Yes, sir. Sorry, Billy. Well, it's okay. It's just ice cream. And, and I will pay you back that two dollars. No, you won't. That's a gift. Keep it. In the meantime, let's go to my ice cream store. I've got an employee discount. Hey, that's right by the plasma donation place, right? Hold on, I'll come with. We'll see you tomorrow.